next speaker, who is uh, Neil Postlethwaite, who is uh, Program Director, IBM Messaging and IoT Foundation Product Management at IBM. Thank you. Okay. Morning, all. I'm sorry, I can't see you at all. I'm completely blinded by lights coming in this direction. But i um, delighted to be here today. Uh, I'll apologize for my voice in advance. I've got tonsillitis. I'm not feeling on top form. If I fall off the stage, if somebody could pick me up and put me to sleep around the back, that would be much appreciated. Um, so my role, my role. I've spent the last 21 years in enterprise messaging and the integration space along with a, a merry army of folks. There are about 3,000 of us uh, down in a small piece of paradise called Hursley, just south of Winchester. About 1,500 engaged in mainstream product development and about 1,500 services. And I say that because we've been in this space for some time. The notion of IoT, is, as we've been hearing throughout the last day and a bit, is nothing new. So part of the extension of our messaging portfolio has always been to reach out to the edge of network with things like our MQTT protocol, which is you know, really lightweight and designed for gathering data in off this myriad of devices. So my role in the space now is, has slightly changed over the last month or so. I'm now responsible for connectivity, so from device to cloud for security, and also for the ecosystem around gateways and devices. So that's my piece of the puzzle. And I think, really, when I, when I look at IoT, this is all about helping our customers, our clients, yourselves, create value out of the wider IoT ecosystem. Right back in 99, we were engaged in opportunities, things like oil and gas pipeline monitoring. How do we extend out what were the then cutting edge systems like SCADA? How do we extend them such they can actually manage and monitor longer pipelines? Because they actually ran out of pipeline length. Just with the round robin protocols that SCADA was involved in, we actually hit the limit in some of the North American oil companies. They couldn't actually physically extend their pipelines and monitor them. So you know, we have to get around some of those, those problems. And we've certainly been in this space for a long time. And the challenges have always been similar. They've been things like connectivity. You know, how do I actually get connected? And that is getting far, far simpler, far, far easier, and far, far cheaper. You can get devices today for sub $10 a device with 14 different protocol stacks on for communications, which you can configure via software. And that is changing the game. That's what's driving IoT, is the ubiquitous connectivity that's out there. Things like timeliness as well. A lot of these systems in the past were very, very closed. And you weren't looking at real-time data. I mean, we heard the example yesterday about the mining engineers who got a tablet at the start of the day with all of the data in there. And that was, that was their eight hours worth of data, and it didn't change. And we have to get away from that. So it's about getting data in a far more real-time fashion. Anybody recognize this one? Can anybody who's not with IBM give me the marketing slogan? Instrumented, interconnected, intelligent. Nobody heard of that? I guess not. I guess I need to talk to our marketing department. But this, this was launched in 2008. This was IBM's Smarter Planet campaign. And it's still going today. So this is IoT in action. So things like smarter cities. Things like smarter water, smarter oil and gas. We had a big push back in 2008 into these spaces with the technology that we had today. 
And there's some things that are changing, but some of those projects have been incredible. Things like Dublin Bay and the Water Quality Monitoring Project, which had all sorts of really interesting side effects. So not only did we get better handle on the water quality in Dublin, but some real innovative opportunities came out around, around the ecosystem. So we opened things up with APIs, and all of a sudden we find that the fishermen coming in on the boats are able to real-time report their catch, and the right folks can be on the quayside right, waiting for those fresh fish coming in, all because of communications technology that we put in around instrumentation for Dublin Bay and the harbors. So some fantastic projects all around connectivity, getting things connected. So what's changing? Nothing very quickly, by the way. I press and it kind of sleeps for a bit. Um, so data. So I think of this um, in three ways. So data, cloud, and engagement. So data. Data is where the value is. Data is where we can really create business opportunity and actually drive competitive advantage for our companies is getting the data in off of these devices. And that's changing the game. You've seen a lot of charts over the last few days with you know, big upticks in, in data, big upticks in numbers of devices connected. I don't think you know, there's any debate there. Cloud is the other interesting one. So cloud is actually the how. So data is the what, cloud is the how. And cloud is all about economics. Cloud is not about technology. Cloud is about helping folks get on board with solutions very, very quickly and at very low cost, at least initially, until, until the workloads ramp up. And there was a discussion yesterday in the panel around were people going to get pushed out of business or was there going to be competitive advantage? And I think you know, the gentleman at the end of the panel had it spot on. You know, cloud will really enable the small guys to start and grow. So things like Uber, things like Airbnb, those things are all facilitated with the cloud back end. And that's giving the average man on the street or the average small business access to compute power that was normally the realm of high-end companies with a massive IT budget and a big engineering department looking after those systems. So cloud is changing the game from an economic perspective. And so is, you know, the, the last one is engagement. And engagement is interesting. I mean, I think, I think this epitomizes what we believe as engagement now. It's a, it's a phone, it's rather big, but it's a phone. Um, that's the level of expectation that we have from our IT systems today. You know, you expect to interact with things, you expect them to work. There's no tolerance for systems not working. If you have devices, there's an expectation that you can connect to those devices, that you can get simple and straightforward access on your mobile device, tablet, or at least with some relatively quick and easy visualization. So those three factors are really changing how the space is perceived. Anybody noticed anything in the press recently? So a couple of major announcements from IBM in the IoT space. First one is that we actually launched, uh, we launched in February at our interconnect event in Las Vegas, an Internet of Things division. So we actually now have, have a division focused on driving value from the IoT space. And a couple of interesting constituent parts in the division. If you look at the current solutions box, and apologies, it's a bit small, some technology in there that belongs in the IoT space. So starting from the bottom, the Internet of Things zone on something called Bluemix, I'll talk about in a minute. That's all around connectivity. That's the piece of the puzzle where I come into the play. But some really other interesting pieces that we've pulled into our IoT division. So things like asset management. We have an awful lot of asset management technology out there in production across many, many fields of the planet. Things like continuous engineering. And this is the tooling that's being used today in many of the auto manufacturers, 
many of the high-end military installations to actually create embedded systems in a secure, unscalable fashion with very, very rigorous design. So those tooling, or those pieces of tooling are a cracking fit for IoT. Same with predictive maintenance. Lots and lots of these capabilities come up whatever industry that you're in and whatever use case that you're looking at. And then on, then on the right-hand side as well, again within the division, we'll have a set of emerging solutions. And this is really around how do we get to an 80-20 rule? How do I provide something to an auto manufacturer which is 80% there for a connected car and 20% customization? And I said customization, not coding. So you know that's something you can go in and configure, change parameters, that kind of thing. So very much focused on solutions. Then a week or so later, we had something else. I went from being part of a division to being part of a business unit. So in the space of a few weeks, IBM has gone from having a division, which is one organizational construct, to we now have a complete business unit focused on IoT. And if you look at where that business unit is in the IBM corporation, it's in the analytics area. And there's absolutely no debate as to why that is. When push comes to shove, Internet of Things is about the data, and it's about how do you get value from that data. So you know we've landed in the analytics division. That's absolutely the right place. So big focus on IoT. Some interesting partnerships as well. So a partnership with the weather company. Weather company is, is an amazing outfit. They started doing TV weather in the US. Excuse me. And now, I think TV is about 10 to 20% of their business. They kick out 2.2 billion local weather forecasts i.e. local to a mobile device or to some other piece of equipment that needs to know about the weather, a day. On a bad weather day, they kick out 10 billion. And they've done that through APIs and exposing data through APIs. And they're gathering data from hundreds of thousands of sensors on all sorts of things. It's no accident that if any of you flew in transatlantic, you had a less bumpy flight than you would have had 10 years ago. And that's because pretty much every plane that's up there has its own set of weather instrumentation in the front of the plane. And it's monitoring what they call the wave oscillations of the jet stream. And the flight paths are dynamically altered by the airlines in conjunction with the lights of the weather channel, um, the weather company, sorry, I shouldn't say channel. Um, actually feeding them proactively that weather information. So that's great IoT use cases. But it doesn't stick with aviation. You know, they, they, they were on stage with us in New York a few weeks back. And I think my favorite use case, it's a bit bizarre, but apparently on rainy days, ladies like to buy hair products. So there are a whole set of stores in the US if they see the weather forecast is, is rain, they will put certain products that control hair just by the checkout. And they have a massive peak of sales on these wet weather days. So, you know, interesting retail use case. Doesn't really apply to me, there's not much up top, but. <laughs> and then some technology announcements. So we announced a, a partnership with Texas Instruments. And this is all around secure, provisioning and life cycle of IoT devices. So it's all well and good having millions of, of, of devices out there and connected, but what are we actually doing to provision them and actually make sure that we know and understand they are who they say they are? So what we've done with TI is as chips come off their silicon fab lines, they come off with a unique ID burnt in. That ID can register itself with our secure cloud service, and it, you know, that device then has its entire life cycle managed. You know, from the moment it's built into a washing machine to the moment I buy the washing machine to the moment I sell it on and to the moment it's eventually scrapped, that device ID can be trusted. And that's something that we're opening up 
to other cloud providers and also to other silicon providers. So I think, you know, I'll talk about it in a minute, but IoT is most definitely an ecosystem play. Come on. Excellent. Right. So, Bluemix. Anybody heard of Bluemix? Hands up. Bluemix. One. Can't see any more. I'm blind. Oh, there's a few. Good. Anybody heard of SoftLayer? A few more. All righty. So, this is the kind of technology that we're building on for our cloud-hosted solutions, and this is a bit of a cloud session. So, Bluemix is our platform as a service. I'll talk about it in a moment, but think of it as a set of services which save you actually doing the effort of standing them up. So you might want a database. You know, you don't want to put a rec in, have the system administrator disappear off, and then three or four weeks later you have a, have a database. You want a database within a few seconds. So, you know, that's the idea of platform as a service is stand up services very, very quickly. Uh, um, very, very cheaply. Next layer above is some kind of componentry that is working at a higher level. So you might want a predictive maintenance service or some kind of asset management service. And then at the top level is the industry solution. So that's the, the tiering where we're building out IoT. And then on the left-hand side, ecosystem, things like standards and consortia will become more important over time. It's a little bit like the Wild West out there now, um, candidly. You know, there's another consortia that pops up every five minutes. It's because we're in an emerging market state. That state will change, and I think a few standards and a few consortia will, will win over. But for the moment, it's a very interesting space. Three minutes, OK. All right, so Bluemix, platform as a service, really gives you a palette of services which you can use to stand up an application very quickly. All of the services on Bluemix have a free tier, so you can get going without actually paying anything. My cheapest price plan for the IoT Foundation service, which is all about connecting your devices in, is $20 a month. $20 a month from IBM. Come on, that has to be a bargain. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it, it's just, you know, it's, it shows you what kind of economics cloud can, can, can provide here. So our Internet of Things Foundation service is all about connecting very quickly and securely devices into the cloud. Connect, collect, and manage is, is the, the mantra that I have around that. And what that's doing is making the data that's coming off of all those myriad of devices available to the other cloud services running in Bluemix and allowing you to actually wire together visually those services with other services and those services in an if this then that style with temperature thresholds and those kind of things. And it is all pay-as-you-go SaaS pricing. You can sign up with a credit card and you get a monthly bill. We have an IoT zone, and the URL is at the back of this presentation. I'd encourage you all to go and have a look on bluemix.net and have a look at the IoT zone. Have a look at some of the examples that we've actually got up there. It's very, very interesting. It's very quick and simple to get started with. And when I say there's a lot of services on Bluemix, there are a lot of services on Bluemix. And every time I go and look at the catalog, there's more services. And what it's really important to understand is those services are not just from IBM, they're from all of yourselves. Pitney Bowes has stood up a location service. There are other community services and services from open source providers. This is acting as a marketplace for folks to actually stand up services and allow others to consume them. So there's a marketplace there Great set of services, all very interesting and useful for IoT applications. Everybody else has taught smarter cities and you know, smarter this and smarter that. Uh, uh, this is my favorite use case at the moment. 
Who doesn't like power boats? What's not to like about power boats? It's exciting, right? And, and this is the Lucas Oil power boat. It generates about 1,000 data points a second off its engine and water cooling and this, that, and the other. We fire those up to the cloud. There we can do a lot of analytics on them, but more importantly, we can do visualization. So visualization for the commentators, visualization for the race teams. Think Formula One and what you see on the bottom of the TV when you're watching the Formula One when they put all those dials up. And that's really interesting, because these things are going at 140 miles an hour on water. So it's really good for the team to be talking to the guy about the throttles and the dials and where everything is, than him having to look at everything. Let's him focus on the water. But also, from a fan perspective, they can actually see what's going on. Because normally, power boats, you know, they're there for a moment, and then they're four miles offshore. That's not very exciting. So, so instead of sat there with your binoculars, you can actually hold your tablet and see what's going on. The really interesting thing about this is not the use case. The use case is pretty sexy. I mean, it's pretty sexy. Power boats are sexy. It took three weeks to implement this solution. Three weeks, start to finish, instrumented, hooked up to the cloud, analytics running. And it wasn't three weeks of 500 people. It was three weeks of two people in virtual eye who are a visualization specialist down in New Zealand. It was a bit of my team helping in Austin and in Hursley. And one of our services guys. And they had a live project that was used in the November race done in three weeks. And now we're busy augmenting that to do th exciting things like vital signs and all those biometrics as well. But just remember that, three weeks. That's the kind of difference cloud can make. All right, I'm going to wrap this up pretty quickly because I'm going to get told off in a minute. Um, ecosystem. This is really, really important in IoT. None of us can do IoT on our own. From an IBM perspective, we don't manufacture devices, we don't manufacture gateways, and we're not a telco or a low-power wide area network provider. We have to partner. And without those capabilities, there is no IoT solution. So we have a lot of partnerships on the device side, the gateway side, the network side, and also on the cloud side and the solutions and application pieces. You know, yes, we have solutions capabilities, but yes, we have an awful lot of GSIs and RSIs and other development partners who actually help out here. So IoT is an ecosystem play, and there's partnerships right across the board. And just some quick examples of, uh, of how we do get devices on board very quickly, recipes. So we have recipes for connecting devices. And you might have noticed in the press recently, Arm released an IoT starter kit. And the first thing that that starter kit does when it wakes up is it connects to IBM's Internet of Things Foundation and Bluemix. Texas Instruments, their new sensor tags, if any of you have seen those, they're a device with about a dozen sensors on, great for getting projects started. First thing the sensor tag does when it wakes up, connects to your mobile phone, connects to the Internet of Things Foundation and IBM Bluemix. So that connectivity problem is starting to be taken away. And that's making things a lot quicker to get going. With that, I'm going to wrap it up. Um, I'll skip across the next couple of charts. Um, basically, Institute of Business Value charts. We've got a lot of interesting reports coming out. Conclusion, I think we have value that we can offer today in conjunction with yourselves in the room from a partner perspective, from a customer perspective. We can really take IoT to the next level and make it real. Thank you for your time this morning. I'm glad my voice is still here, and uh, I'll be around for questions later in the day. Thank you. Thank you.